Hello, everybody. We are back to talk a little bit more about the video that Mark Leta posted on his channel two days ago. The video he posted was called like talking about mental health issues with Lima Yevremovic, something like that. Now, I did already make a reaction video to Lima's personal channel, page, post, video, whatever. <laughs> I mean, just go watch it. Go watch hers. Go watch my reaction to it. Um, I'm always going to tell y'all when people make videos and they are trying to explain themselves to just go watch those videos. I know a lot of y'all are saying like, oh, don't give her the clicks. Don't give her the engagement. You should hear it straight from Lima. The first thing she said whenever she wanted to come back on her channel. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. Today's video is not going to be about Lima's shit post video. Today's video on this channel is going to be a response to the video that Mark Leta posted on his channel of Lima. Okay. It's a very interesting juxtaposition to me to look at the difference in demeanor, behavior, attitude that Lima exhibits on Mark's channel versus on her own channel, right? And it doesn't really look like she's taken it very seriously on her own channel, which really begs the question, why is she taking it so far as to do this whole frivolous lawsuit? I want to just remind y'all, you can see this video in its entirety on Mark Leta's channel. And I actually encourage you to go watch it because that's one of the things they accuse presumably me of doing is not watching all the videos. I've watched every one of those videos more than once, <laughs> I promise. And I've watched this new one now more than once. So y'all should also go watch it and you should watch every single video in Amanda Rabb's series. Every one. I've always said that this is not brand new information. I've always told y'all to go watch stuff yourself. What we're about to do together here is just some clips from that longer 30 or 40 minute video from Mark's channel. Okay. And this is just clips y'all. Okay. Don't nobody accuse me of taking something out of context. Go watch the video yourself because it's up there. All right. I'm just want to talk about a few things that Lima and Mark both said on this video and show y'all a few receipts from the public record that maybe disagree with the things that they're now saying in real time as of September 9th, 2022. There's been a lot of misinformation spread um, about Amanda, about Larry, about myself and you, of just people kind of trying to make entertainment out of the situation, taking people's pain and turning it into like views and clicks. And taking people's pain, views and clicks. Obviously, I put that part in there <laughs> to just show their hypocrisy, right? So when I report on the news, and talk about something that not one, not one single mainstream or traditional news outlet has spoken about yet, right? In the in this context about this autopsy report, when I do it, it's doing it for entertainment, clicks, and and views. Let me tell y'all something. I'm an entertaining person. If this camera was off and you were sitting in my living room with me, this is how I talk. This is how I act. If you are entertained by my videos, thank you very much. But that's not the purpose. The purpose is to teach people their rights and to expose things that are going on in the public record and show y'all how y'all could do the same thing. Because the way that our tax dollars are being spent and the way that our institutions are being run is our business. That's what I'm doing it for. If it's entertaining and gets views and likes, that's great. Thank you very much, Lima, for calling my educational content and my journalism entertaining. But that's not really the reason I do it. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If I was just on here to entertain y'all, I would do stand up. I would do pranks. I would do jokes. Why would I come on here to entertain people by telling you that something that was said publicly about this woman's cause of death doesn't match the autopsy result? Is that entertaining to anyone? Because I don't find that to be entertaining. But apparently Lima is just putting it on me that I'm doing stuff for, for likes and, and entertainment. But you know what? Maybe she's talking about Dustin Daly or Patrick Cece. Maybe she's not talking about me. I'll just put it that way. Well, they, they take a lot of information out of context. Again, y'all go watch Mark's whole entire video, please, please go watch it all. You make up some information and, and create a sensational video that makes it look like, yeah, like <laughs> you were up to no good. One person in particular. One person in particular. It's me. <laughs> you know, basically created a story with a false narrative mm, and pushed I? it out. Yeah. I was expecting to come. Created a story with a false narrative. Now, what she could possibly be talking about is completely beyond me because I don't do anything with a false narrative. Um, what I have done is ask questions 
and speculated about things. And also what I have done is told y'all that Lima came on a video that was called autopsy results purporting to read from the autopsy results and did not read from the autopsy results. She did not tell the truth about the cause of death. She did not tell the truth about the drugs in Amanda Rab's system. So that's not a false narrative. And the fact that Lima doesn't specify what false narrative she's talking about is very telling because y'all see when you come into this channel, I give y'all details, I give y'all receipts and I give y'all the trail, the path along the way of how I arrived at certain conclusions and certain questions and certain theories. Lima does no such thing. She's just kind of vague booking, right? One person in particular was talking, taking things and creating a false narrative Okay, but what's the false narrative then? Because the only thing I'm seeing is you whining in your nasally voice on Mark Latest channel about people being mean to you, but you haven't really addressed any of the issues. And that's the problem here. It's easy to sling mud and call me a conspiracy theorist, unemployed, and all of that. But it's very hard to explain why you didn't tell the truth about the way the woman died. That is what people really want you to be talking about. All this other stuff about false narratives, girl, you didn't tell the truth about the cause of death and the drugs in the girl's system. That's what we really need to be talking about. All this other stuff is just lanyard. I'm on your channel and talk about like a new way, uniting together, treating mental health. I would love to unite together for a new way to treat mental health, y'all. I've always been open to that. My problem comes in whenever she forced that help onto a woman who did not want it, who openly expressed that she did not want it. Why can't Lima find somebody to, to do this case study on who willingly consents? That's the question I want y'all to ask. If Lima's thing is so helpful and so good, which it may be, I have never really seen it used, really, other than that video, you know, of Amanda. If it's so good, why doesn't she use it? Why doesn't she volunteer? Why doesn't she show us that it's worked on someone who volunteered? Why, if it works so good and all that, does she have to force it on a lady? And that's really what it comes down to for me. And the other thing it comes down to is the cause of death and the drugs in the system. It wasn't, it wasn't true. Now we're about to get into a part in this video where Lima's going to attempt to explain away why she wasn't reading from the official autopsy results. And honestly, y'all, I'm not buying it, but don't take my word for it. We're going to watch it through together. Go watch it yourself. And you tell me what your opinion is. Health differently. And I kind of found myself like battling an invisible war with people that have leaked my private information. They have relentlessly. Surely she's not talking about me leaking her private information because a leak is something that's not public and then somebody makes it public. Everything that I have posted on the internet has been publicly available and anyone can get it. I have not leaked anyone's information. So to accuse me of doing so seems slightly defamatory. And, and the scandal that... So we fast forward and now we got Mark talking about a scandal. They're referring to my investigation into the circumstances surrounding a woman's death, a vulnerable homeless woman who was taken off the streets against her will, who was put into court ordered treatment and decisions were made for her. It's calling my investigation into the cause of death and the drugs in the woman's system at the time that she died a scandal. Mark Lates is referring to a very serious investigation as a scandal. I just want y'all to see how these people try to turn and twist the truth into something that's more convenient for them. But we see what they're doing. This isn't a scandal and it isn't drama. Okay. It's an investigation into the circumstances surrounding someone's death. All right. that That's not a scandal. Yeah. The crazy so, social media people has made it harder for you to do anything. The crazy social media people. It's very good thing that I'm not a defamation lawsuit happy, isn't it? The crazy social media people with Ivy League law degrees hmm, who are investigating publicly available documents from public institutions funded by taxpayers is not crazy people on social media, Mark. This is what they have continuously done to people who are trying to expose corruption since the beginning of civilization. Call them crazy 
and then nobody cares what they say. But isn't that kind of familiar to Britney Spears? Oh, she's crazy. She needs a conservatorship. Or Bam Margera or Amanda Bynes, they're crazy. So we shouldn't listen to what they have to say. Amanda Rabb herself, oh, she's a crazy crack schizophrenic prostitute. That's what they called her. We shouldn't listen to what she has to say. We shouldn't take seriously her allegations about Larry Rabb or anything else. We shouldn't take her allegations seriously because she's crazy. And look, this is what Mark Lates is doing to me now. Crazy social media people. Baby, I'm far from crazy. I'm far from crazy. And I'm not going to make this into a, a determination on my character and my mental health because that's not really what's up at issue, is it? I didn't go tell nobody that Amanda only had Tylenol in her system. And I didn't tell anybody that she died from a seizure disorder. Lima did that. So whether or not I'm crazy is beside the point, isn't it? Absolutely. Because when people look me up, um, they see these crazy accusations. Crazy. And they crazy. don't really do further. Crazy accusations like Lima lied about Amanda's cause of death. And she lied about the drugs in her system. She never corrected herself until September 9th, 2022. But before going and doing that, which is the easiest thing to do, just go out and make a video, correct yourself. She sued me to shut me up from talking about it. That's the crazy accusation she's talking about. And she said, oh, people go out there and they don't do their own research. Well, that's not my fault. Because I have told people continuously, including in this video itself, to watch every one of Amanda's videos and make up their own mind. Crazy. These crazy accusations. Crazy. It is pretty crazy that it happened. I'm not the crazy one, though, baby. The research. So it really like so Chris, put a Rebecca, giant hole Chris, in Rebecca, my credibility. Whoever else you, might help. you know what put a giant hole in Lima's credibility? Lima. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lima put a giant hole in Lima's credibility, not me, because I just said, oh, look, I got a little flashlight here. Y'all look in this direction. Look, look, look where this don't add up. I didn't put a hole in your credibility. There was nothing there if impeachable. Then you would have all your credibility intact. But instead of giving receipts, proof, explanations, you put out a shit post video with Dustin Dern. I'm not the reason your credibility is shot. You are. Pays, pays the price. Yeah, absolutely. Not, not, not to mention all the stress on you. Yeah, but these people are claiming you, you killed a man, those th things like that. I mean, why, yeah, why so, would you have gotten a loan for 200? Surely he's not talking about me because I've never claimed that Lima killed Amanda. And I never thought that. And I don't think it today. I don't think Lima killed Amanda. I've said that many times. So either they're talking about someone else that's not me. Okay. I don't think that. They're about to try and make it seem like I said a bunch of stuff I did not say. So I'm putting it out there very clearly for everybody watching these videos. I did not say that Amanda was killed by anyone. I did not say that Lima killed anyone, especially Amanda. $50,000 to help. Like not anyone can just go and take out a loan for 200000 So I don't know if it's 200000 or 250000 It's a discrepancy. Um, I can't make money because these people have called me. These people, she can't make money because these people, see how she don't take any responsibility. I can't make money because I should have told the truth. That's what she should have been saying. But instead she's spending, the, she can't make money. She can't make money because these people, <laughs> but she can spend money hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars an hour on celebrity defamation attorneys. But poor Lima's on Mark's channel telling y'all you need to feel bad for her because she can't make money because these people, mm. I think a lot of the problems stem from the autopsy results. Yeah, here we go. I think a lot of the problems stem from the autopsy results. Yeah. The autopsy results came, you read them, but. The autopsy results came, you read them is what Mark Leita just said. I just want y'all to note. Tell me about, explain what happened with the autopsy. First off, it, it took how many months for them to, to Clark County to get the autopsy? Results. Um, so it took them seven months, uh, before they actually gave us an answer. When they finally came back with an answer, uh, they said, Amanda died from arrhythmia, cardiac arrhythmia relating to schizophrenia. And when we asked. So for those keeping notes at home, that's Lima saying we got the autopsy results and it said she had cardiac arrhythmia with schizophrenia. 
as a complicating factor, as well as obesity and hypertension, which Lima just left out, omission. Lima said she knew that the cause of death was listed. Lima is admitting right here, right now that she knew. She knew at the time that she was reading those autopsy results word for word back in December. She's telling you right now she knew that the cause of death was not listed as a seizure disorder on that original autopsy. It's what she's telling you. Let's listen to it again. Don't take my word for it. You tell me what this means. Back with an answer, uh, they said Amanda died from arrhythmia, cardiac arrhythmia relating to schizophrenia. And when we asked. And Lima, what she about to tell you is didn't really like that answer. Let's hear her say it in her own words. While she didn't have schizophrenia, you know, originally they said because uh, people with schizophrenia have a f uh, four times higher chance of having cardiac arrhythmia. And so then we responded with, you know, Amanda didn't have schizophrenia. Did you get her medical records from the treatment center she passed away at? And, um, and their, their response was, oh, we never received those medical records. Um, she was at that tree. They never received those medical records. What medical records did they receive? Because the autopsy results say that limited medical records were obtained. So it just makes me wonder what medical records were received. Um, she was at that facility for six months and they didn't get her medical records from the facility she passed away. They didn't get her medical records. Well, girl, you were sending shit back and forth to them. You said, so why you couldn't just send the medical records? Away from, um, so we responded and um, we sent them videos. We sent them all of these things. And upon review, um, the doctor that performed the autopsy report sent me back, um, you know, an email that. The doctor that performed the autopsy sent Lima back an email email you also have a copy of an email an email and um essentially stating that they're going to amend the autopsy results now that they have this additional information that they somehow overlooked um you know who you know who else somehow overlooked something lima yavrimovich when she somehow overlooked that the cause of death was not marked as a seizure disorder on a video called autopsy results mm. Somehow overlooked. It, and ma so, it made you look bad in the social media world. And they also knew that I was going to give a public statement. Um, because now it's the coroner's office that made Lima look bad. Y'all see how nothing's Lima's fault. The coroner's office made Lima look bad in the social media world, according to Mark Leta. They had all of your videos. Um, and so I read directly from exactly what the doctor sent me. Directly from exactly what the doctor sent me. Directly from exactly what the doctor sent me. And email work y'all heard that okay she said she had an email directly from what the doctor sent her so how come when she went on mark latest channel in december she didn't say email results email from the doctor you know what she said i'm gonna read word from word from exactly what they sent after she had just confirmed that it took seven months to get the autopsy results, Mark Leta said, so Lima, we finally have the autopsy results, don't we? She said, yes, we do. She has papers in her hand. I'm going to read word for word of what we got, word for word of what we got. That's what she said. I'm going to read word for word of what we got on a video called autopsy results after she had papers in her hand and said, we finally got the autopsy results and confirmed that. Now she's telling Mark's viewers it was an email. Now she's telling Mark's viewers it was an email. And instead of it being Lima's fault for the oversight, what they're trying to tell us is it's my fault. It's the people that have been looking into its fault. It's the witch hunter's fault. And now it's somehow also the coroner's office fault. But none of this is Lima's fault for being the person who was in charge of Amanda Rabb's care, who took legal responsibility for her treatment who took financial responsibility for her treatment coming seven months after amanda rab died not telling you what was actually on the autopsy result none of that is is lima's fault according to them it's my fault it's y'all's fault it's commenter's fault it's the coroner's fault it's dr uribe's fault and she's gonna have to sort it out with them because none of this is her fault she can't just say oops sorry i fucked up 
Why not? Word for word, because I didn't want to mess it up. Um, she didn't want to mess up reading the doctor's email on a video called autopsy results. And she wasn't reading from an autopsy. And she just admitted to you that she knew that Dr. Paul Uribe had marked the death already as cardiac arrhythmia. She just already admitted that she knew that when she read these autopsy results, which were it was now we're being told was an email between her and a doctor. Um, and I guess they never amended the autopsy report. Now, what you're looking at here is an email from the Clark County coroner to one of my investigation team that said, there's no addendums. This is from September 2nd. This is from like last week, a week and a half ago. I guess they never amended the autopsy report. I guess they never amended the autopsy report. She's the one accusing the center of oversight. Of, uh, I don't know how that was overlooked. Whatever. I could say the same question back to her. How was that overlooked? What do you mean you guess? You get? I guess they never amended it. <laughs> what? So why didn't you go on Mark's channel and say that before suing me? I guess they never amended it. <laughs> I was reading from an email on a video called autopsy results. Guess they never amended it. <laughs> but this is going to be very important later in the video. So just keep that in mind that Lima is right now telling you I guess they never amended the autopsy results. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. So we're waiting for a response from Clark County. There's your response from Clark County. There are no addendums. We sent only and any final reports that our office has. Only and any final reports. Now, Lima just told y'all she knew when she heard back. It was cardiac arrhythmia complicated by schizophrenia. She omitted the other complicating factors, which are obesity and hypertension. But all of a sudden it's, I guess it was never amended. <laughs> and it's a funny little thing to laugh about after she went and told millions of people that the way Amanda died was a way that she did not die and said that there was only Tylenol in her system and there was way more than Tylenol. Now it's, I guess they never amended it. <laughs> Okay, that's going to be very important soon. Just keep just keep that in mind. I'm actually, um, I've had to um, request that they do issue a public statement because I'm not trying to do the he said, she said thing. She's not trying to do the he said, she said thing, but she just did it. She just told you the whole story and then it's like, but I'm not trying to do that. Okay, so you are because you just did it. Um, I'd rather it come from the source. Um, the source said there's no addendums. Y'all just saw the email. And, you know, the other accusation was uh, Amanda had more than just Tylenol in her system. She did. Um, my, you know, statement for that. me to reveal what medication somebody's on. She just went through a very long ramble and I just got to the point. So I edited this part in. But if y'all want to see the whole thing she said, the ramble, go to Mark's channel and watch it is outside of HIPAA law. And so at the time, prior to everything becoming so public because of these people seeking to get- These people, these people are absolutely the reason that things are public. And I want to be very clear, I'm not sorry about it. We have the Freedom of Information Act on a federal level in this country, and each state has open records requests that you as an informed citizen lawyer or not have access to. So these people are absolutely going to continue to request any and all public information related to this case because that is our right. It is our right to see how our public institutions are being used, how these diversion programs are being used in on in and on the most vulnerable people in our society. The people who have the least respect, the least voice, hell yes, these people have been looking at what you said versus what was actually true, okay? And we're going to keep doing it. These people. Who could she be talking about? Medical records and autopsy results and all. Funny, she's smiling. It's so funny to just... It's so funny that someone exercised their right to share public documents with people as freedom of the press. It's just funny. It's hilarious. Look at her. It's funny to her. It's funny. Ha ha. All of that and posting it all over the internet against the wishes of the family and the privacy. 
And guess what else? I don't have all of her medical information. They redacted probably 40% of that autopsy result. But the part they didn't re redact actually contradicts Lima's statements that she said about the cause of death and the drugs in the system. And the communications that I have with the coroner contradict that there was some kind of amendment and addendum and all this stuff. Y'all, I have it linked below. Go look yourself at the autopsy result and you tell me what it says. See, in respect for Amanda. Now it's I don't respect Amanda because I'm trying to figure out how the woman died. Okay. Um, you know, I couldn't list her actual medications that she was taking because that. Y'all, please listen to this woman. Please listen to this. You know, I couldn't list her actual medications that she was taking because that would require me actually revealing what her mental illness diagnosis was. The Let's see if we can parse through the clown world of it all. Lima just said, I couldn't reveal which diet, which medication she was on because it would have revealed her diagnosis. And that would have violated HIPAA. Look, y'all, I'm not a HIPAA expert and I do not know about HIPAA. So I'm just saying about the HIPAA part, just leave that to the side. Okay. But what, let's follow the logic along here. I couldn't tell y'all what medication she was on because that would have told you what her diagnosis was. Lima and Mark have been telling us that Amanda was schizophrenic for several videos before Amanda even died. Okay. So I don't know what gave... Lima the right to tell us at that time what Amanda's diagnosis was or how about her sisters that she's also treating or was treating as of February of last year with Aura. She told us their diagnosis that she said they were falsely diagnosed with schizophrenia and then they got diagnosed with DID. You know, the reason I know that is because Lima Yavremovich told me that in front of millions of other people who she told that to. So I just find it rich and very interesting that now she was going to stop at the specific medications on the privacy. She could tell y'all every other damn thing about the woman. She could tell y'all about how she uh, uh, was doing the virtual reality. She could tell y'all about the schizophrenia. She could tell you all her other stuff, traumatic brain injury. She could tell you everything else. She's going to stop at the medications in the system and not just there. She's still going to tell you some medication in Amanda's system, which turned out not to be true, only had Tylenol in her system. There wasn't no damn Tylenol in that woman's system. None. But there was cannabinoids and there was trace amounts of barbiturates. There was gabapentin. There was nicotine. There was some other stuff. Nicotine, I'll even let that go. Who cares? You smoke and rehab. That's no problem. Whatever. You know what I mean? But like, what are you talking about? You couldn't tell people what medicine Amanda was on because that would reveal her diagnosis. So instead, you just still told people what medicine was in her system. What would have been so hard about Lima saying, I am not at liberty to discuss the drugs that were in Amanda's system. What I can say is it was not an over. And I am being told that it was not an overdose. We're going to have to wait for the official toxicology reports to know more for sure. Lima could have said, because of HIPAA, I'm not at liberty to discuss what drugs were in Amanda's system. She could have said that. But no, she said all she had in her system was Tylenol. Do y'all see the difference between those two statements? It's not just like, oh, you know, I, I recorded a conversation Lima was having casually and leaked it. I am reporting on the public statements. The PR statement of the woman who was in charge of Amanda at the time Amanda died. I'm, I'm reporting on the public statement. It's not like some phone call I leaked. Lima said, I know they did a toxicology report. All she had in her system was Tylenol. And that wasn't true. So why couldn't she say, I know they did a toxicology report. I'm not at liberty to discuss what was in Amanda's system, but I can promise you anything in her system was prescribed and it was not overdose. She could have said that. That wouldn't have given away her diagnosis at all. She didn't have to tell us anything about a diagnosis. She told us more in this video about a diagnosis than anyone ever asked. What we asked was, why didn't you tell the truth about the cause of death and the drugs in the system? Still no real good answer. Let's see if we can suss something out from here the question was did amanda relapse and my i did not hear that question but maybe that was a question off screen and mark didn't edit it in answer was no she just had tylenol in her system she just had tylenol in her system she was in a treatment center residential under 24 7 surveillance 24 7 surveillance 
She was in a, in a treatment center under 24-7 surveillance, but the last time she was seen alive was right before midnight, and then they didn't find her dead in her bed until after 9 o'clock in the morning the next morning, but she was under 24-hour surveillance. I don't know. I don't know how that can both be true, but I'm just reporting on the different things that have been said. She didn't really on drugs. She stayed sober. She died sober. That right there should have been her statement. It shouldn't have been she only had Tylenol in her system. She should have said she did not rest on drugs. She died sober, which I mean, that's arguable. Did she die sober? I don't know. I know a lot of y'all have different definitions of that, and I really am not trying to get into it, but she did have cannabinoids in her system. So I don't know if she died sober or not. Um, it is interesting to me, though, that now Lima's saying what she should have said back in December. She should have said she did not re on drugs i'm not at liberty to discuss anything further because of hipaa she just said it just now it must have not been that hard and i was told that she had tylenol in her system i guess it was actually aspirin in her system um, and i was just reading exactly what i was given the problem with that is that the video was called autopsy results and you said what you were given in this video is now an email. Why would somebody do that? It seems misleading to me. I'm going to read from an email, but at the beginning of the video, that's called autopsy results. I'm going to say, yeah, we finally got the autopsy results back. I'm going to read word for word from what we got. And then what you read from is actually an email. It's very misleading to call that video autopsy results, to read from an email after you already know that that doctor made the cause of death, cardiac arrhythmia, on the autopsy report. Talking about, oh, he said he was going to amend it. Then show me that email because I'm about to show y'all an email at the end of them. I'm going to show y'all a couple emails. I have no problem showing y'all my email correspondence between any of these people. But for some reason, this mysterious email, no one's ever seen it. And, Absolutely. And they, they realize they can get a lot of views on a video that way and makes. That's real rich coming from the likes of Mark Leta. Yeah. Money maybe on YouTube. I really urge you to do your research because me too. the people that are. I urge you to do your research too. Prove me wrong. Making these videos, they have like cash app links in there. This is the stupidest shit I ever fucking saw. If y'all had any idea how much money I spent on this case, on, on BAM's footage alone, I've spent nearly $500. So yeah, if people want to help me to pay for some of these records, I will gladly accept the help. And it's very, very, very hilarious to me that Mark Leta has a $10 Patreon where he sells glorified homeless people porn on it. Often it's very gray area whether or not they're truly consenting to that. And he's selling glorified porn on Patreon for $10 a month. He's got GoFundMe's linked at the end of almost every single Amanda Rabb video. So somehow it's just fine for Mark Leta to do things that it's just, it's somehow an indictment on my character if I do it. Somebody help me figure that out because I can't figure it out. Logically, I can only operate logically. And logically, that does not make sense. If you're mad at me for putting a cash app to help reimburse for stuff, why are you not mad at Mark? Why are you not mad at your damn self, Miss Girl, for going on there and trying to collect money from those people? Somehow it's an indictment on my character, but you and Mark can do it? Their videos, they have like personal GoFundMes, they're monetized. I do. I have a personal GoFundMe to defend myself in the frivolous defamation suit that Lima filed. For your convenience, I have linked my personal GoFundMe for the legal fees for this specific lawsuit below. Thank you very much. Using all of these videos. I think they have a history of doing this to other people too, right? They well, if by history of doing this to other people, you mean freeing them from conservatorships? Yes, I do. And I plan to continue to do so. They have histories of doing this to other people. Um, the main woman that's been attacking me and kind of lead leading the witch hunt, the um, wit you know. Let the record reflect. I never called Lima Yavramovich a witch. She just called herself a witch. So I just want the record to reflect. I didn't call her that. Uh, she, to my knowledge, is unemployed. So she I'm unemployed, but I got the same job as Mark Leta, whose channel you're begging to be on right now to say this. She's just pushing out the these videos and monetizing them, and they're getting a lot of views. Yes, they um, are. She's yes, also they are. like, thank y'all. Thank you for the views. Thank you. Been sued by her school. Yep. Y'all know why I've been sued by my school. They sued me during a pandemic for some student debt, and I didn't receive the letter. <laughs> Comment below if you have student debt. 
Do you think that because I have student debt and my school sued me, somehow that's an indictment on my character? Or should it be more of an indictment on this capitalistic open prison that we basically live in that forces us to have to get hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of education in order to even understand our rights? Who's it really an indictment on? Unemployed and does in her school sued her for student debt. Girl, why don't you worry about your own debt? Okay, miss, I can't pay back my loan. You are talking about my debt on Mark Lata's channel instead of worrying about your own debt. And that's really your problem. I, I, they're unwatchable because it, it, once you- My videos are not unwatchable. People watch them and love them, Mark. Maybe they're unwatchable to you because you're scared I'm gonna expose you next. And who knows, it might be coming. If you hear somebody taking these things out of context, it just, this is ridiculous yeah. information. I think 99.9% I think .9 of my audience is intelligent enough to know the truth of the situation. Y'all go check them comments. Go check the comments on Mark Lates on this video. Based on those comments, I'm going to agree with Mark. I do think 99.9% .9 of his audience is intelligent enough to know what's really going on. I do think that actually. I actually agree with that. But the, it's that very loud, very upset little 0.1%. That, that little 0.01%. That just makes a million you know, they leave comments on all the videos about Amanda, you killed Amanda and all that stuff. And I never said that. I never said that. Just for the record to reflect, I never said nobody killed Amanda. Absolutely. And it's, it's, just, it's, it's, it's really ridiculous. heartbreaking. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Lena. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Somehow it's bad for me to have a cash app square below my videos and to raise money for a frivolous lawsuit being filed against me in the defense of justice, free speech, and free press. But it's just fine for... Mark later to put a GoFundMe here on there. It's fine for him to do it. Fine for him to do it. I can't do it though. All right. So now what I want to talk about is Mark Leta's response. Mark has responded underneath the video. So whenever that video was originally posted, there was a pinned comment underneath by Lima. And it had all her links to her website and links to this thing and that thing and all kinds of things. And um, people were commenting under that thing, telling her what their thoughts were. I didn't read all of them or anything like that. But that's what that's what the pen comment was. Well, sometime late last night, or maybe it wasn't late, but at some time last night, that comment was completely gone. Lima's comment was completely gone. And in, in its place, there was another pen comment where Mark, here, let me show y'all. This is it right here, had actually responded to the person. I'm not going to read the person's comment, but I want to read Mark's response. There's a couple things I think we should discuss about his response. All right, so it's a little bit obscured, but let's see. So Mark says, you're lacking important information and making up some of your facts. Please watch Amanda's last video where she explains that her father was not a molester, which we have discussed on this channel, that eventually Amanda did recant that statement. But I have no way to know if what Amanda said in the beginning was true or what she said in the end was true. I have no way to know. But what I do know is Larry Rabb now works for and with Lima. I'm just telling y'all different incentives people might have. And that is not against the fucking law. You can do that. I'm allowed to talk. I'm allowed to say what I want to say as long as I'm not saying something that isn't true. He says none of, none of the witch hunters seem to have watched this video. Yes, I did. I think the witches don't seem to have watched my videos where I've said that many fucking times. As for the proceeds from my channel, I give away virtually all I make each month, which is way too much considering how much BS I have to go through on a daily basis. Oh, oh Mark's a little angry. Is, Mark's going to be the next one with hypertension. He better watch his blood pressure. I wish the witch hunters that are so eager to hate would simply absorb the facts that are clear, if not for the obscuring cloud of hate. I find it, y'all see this highlighted part? Interesting that none of them ever, ever bothered to ask me my thoughts on what happened. Y'all keep that in mind because we got receipts coming up right next. I'm not loyal to Lima or anyone else. I'm only interested in the truth. Well, we're going to read an email together real quick. I'm only interested in the truth and I'll do whatever is necessary to get it. See Azariah's third video. Oh, he's, he's given receipts. Shut up. I understand that many were very upset by Amanda's passing, but no one except her father was more upset than Lima. Well, Lima could have been upset and still lied. No one said that she wasn't upset. 
Olima was upset. So therefore there's no possible way she lied about the cause of death and drugs in the woman's system. Like that doesn't make logical sense. Don't come in with your thesaurus if you're not going to make logical sense, Marcus. Okay. I want y'all to look at this. I'm, I'm definitely not going to read this whole email. But y'all can if you want to pause the screen. I sent this to Mark on April 13th, 2022. I said, hey, Mark, my name is BJ and I am a lawyer and fellow YouTuber working on investigation into the death of Amanda Rabb and the circumstances, events and people involved in the last months of her life. Now, I said we had the autopsy result. I said we've uncovered three primary issues with Lima's stated version of events. And y'all, this was supposed to be like a private email. I wasn't like and ever intending to share this like publicly like this. So maybe there's stuff in here like don't take everything in this email for verbatim. Like there might be stuff in here that's not I'm not reading the whole thing with y'all. I don't know. Maybe the whole thing is still correct. But I'm just saying like don't take word for word because the next thing they're going to damn do is be like, oh, she published that email. That's definitely fuck you. Get off my ass. No. I'm just showing y'all that I have sent Mark an email and alerted him to my concerns months ago. Five months ago, I have sent this email to Mark. Five months ago, I sent it. Look down here below number three. Many of my followers are huge fans of yours and have vouched for your character. So I'm reaching out to you in good faith to ask whether there is any contextual information you might be able to add to our investigation or if you would like to make any comment regarding your involvement in Amanda's life and story. Further, I would love to pick your brain and ask a few questions about the circumstances that led to your association with Lima, the events surrounding Lima's forced treatment, and what transpired in the time between Amanda's death and the final video posted on December 23rd. In addition to the three major issues highlighted below, we've found many other disturbing and alarming connections, which we will continue to investigate. But as of now, the autopsy report is the most damning, since Lima makes several demonstrably and materially false statements about the details surrounding Amanda's passing. And then I said, my team and I have found evidence of what appears to be, what appears to be, okay, appears to be, I didn't say she's a criminal. I didn't say she committed crimes. I didn't say I know for a fact she committed crimes. I said, it appears to be a host of criminal activity perpetuated by Lima, Ara, their affiliates, and the handling of Amanda's treatment. So then what I said at the very end, I say, I'm interested to hear your side of the story as someone who saw close up what Lima and her team did. Our findings will be published periodically on various YouTube channels and perhaps beyond if applicable. I hope to hear from you soon so we can get past the material and demonstrable lies and get to the truth. Amanda deserves justice. We think you agree. Best BJ, that surprise witness. Well, wouldn't you know, I never got one response to this email in five months. Not one. And here's Mark later. Let's get to what he just said two days ago or yet actually last night. Let's see. So. Let's look at that highlighted part one more time. I find it interesting that none of them ever bothered to ask me my thoughts on what happened. Well, y'all just read that email along with me. Didn't someone ask him his thoughts on what happened whenever I said, I would like to pick your brain about all the things that transpired? Ha ha, he he. I guess someone did do that. He he. Then he goes on to say, I'm only interested in the truth and I'll do whatever is necessary to get it. Well, whatever is necessary to get it other than responding to the email of the primary witch hunter who y'all are so mad about, Mark Leighton never reached out to me, never responded. And now he's lying. Oh, Mark Leighton caught red handed in a lie. None of them ever bothered to ask me my thoughts on what happened. Not only did I send those emails, y'all, you saw me publicly invite him to come on my channel many times and to go on his channel and talk about it. Here's the email again. I'm not going to have people lying on my name. Mm -mm, not when I have the receipts. Okay, then he says, it's sad that this reaction has happened. Oh, Daddy Marky is going to tell us what makes him sad. The little girls talking about him is making him sad. It's sad that this reaction has happened, but I guess the hate is contagious and intoxicating. The hate isn't contagious and intoxicating. The truth is. The truth. The truth is contagious and intoxicating, sweetie. Then he goes on to say, I'll admit Lima's communication style is troubling at times. And she has said some things that raise my eyebrows. But was she malicious in any way? Absolutely not. The reason I'm allowing all these hateful comments to live here is because I believe in time. All the witch hunters will realize they were overly excited to have found a murder. 
when all they actually found was someone who was doing something very rare and kind for a lost girl that no one would help. Absolutely no one. Well, bitch, looks like I'm helping her right damn now. So, of course, I have something to say. I said, Mark, I've emailed you twice about this issue to no avail. There is no original autopsy report. Lima admits as much. She now claims that she was reading from an email, both in her lawsuit and in this video. There is one autopsy report and no additional amendments. I received communication from the coroner as recently as this month. I checked uh, this morning. I have not received a comment back from Mark on that particular issue. Then Mark had more to say. The autopsy confusion stems from the Clark County coroner. Lima simply read the original autopsy report, which was later amended by the coroner. I'm not even going to get into that anymore. I got made a little music video for y'all so that you can just kind of put these receipts together without me even interjecting. An email. I guess they never amended the autopsy reports. <laughs> Lima was reading email. I guess they never amended the autopsy report. I guess they never amended the autopsy report. Someone tell me how Mark Leta put up a comment last night. What did he say? Hold on. The autopsy confusion stems from the Clark County coroner. This is soft white underbelly. Last night they said this. Lima simply read the original autopsy report, which was later amended by the coroner. That's not what happened. Lima said that when she got the original autopsy report back it mentioned schizophrenia and she started going back and forth with the coroner talking about it wasn't schizophrenia and then at the end of the video she said they never actually amended the report i guess they never amended the report so mark's statement and lima's statement together one of them has to not be true what does that mean when something's not true i guess i can't call it a lie because they're going to try and sue me so i'll just say isn't reality can we do that one it's not reality Mark is over here saying one thing out the side of his mouth. The autopsy confusion is from the coroner. Lima read from the original autopsy report, which was later amended by the coroner. But then Lima in the same damn video says, I guess they never amended the autopsy report. And I wasn't actually reading from the original. I was reading from an email between me and a doctor, which is a whole nother story from the third option, which is that it was some random aura employee. Cause he had the opportunity to clear his name on this. Whenever I sent him a good faith email saying my subscribers vouch for you, they trust you. Would you be willing to talk to me? No, he didn't even ever so much as respond. He didn't even respond with a no, I'm not going to talk to you. He ignored the email and I never got an email. So their two stories don't even add up in this one video. Facts ain't defamation. I love you, mean it. K-bye. Okay,